Senator from Louisiana. Are we in a quorum call? We are not. Thank you. Madam President, I hear my Democratic colleagues praising Obamacare. I had to smile. Yesterday I, had, I heard a colleague talking about how Obamacare was addressing uh, a high pharmaceutical cost. I had to start laughing and kind of a bitter laugh. Uh, tell that to a senior who's paying $6,000 for her medicine, which before Obamacare passed was a fraction of that. We hear how great it is that Obamacare has given so many people coverage. Say that to someone who has a $6,000 deductible. A $6,000 deductible to someone who does not have $400 in her checking account. How great that coverage is. Or, uh, there's a friend of mine, people don't believe it, so I put it on my Facebook page. He got his quote for he and his wife. They are 60 and 61 years of age. Their premium for one year was $39,000. Each of them was $6,000 deductibles. Again, it's on my Facebook page because otherwise no one would believe me. So when people speak about the Affordable Health Care Act, I got to laugh. If this is affordable, what would be unaffordable? <coughs> we can clearly do better than this. Now, I begin this speech by calling into question my Democratic colleagues' defense of Obamacare, but we can have common ground. I applauded and still applaud the goals of those who support the Affordable Care Act. They wish to have coverage for all. Now, that is important. For over 30 years, I worked as a physician in a hospital for the uninsured. My medical practice has been geared towards bringing coverage, to bringing care to those who otherwise would not have. And so as I look at this issue, I have to thank them for their motivation, but have to recognize that the Affordable Care Act has not achieved that in a way which most Americans find as affordable. The other thing about Obamacare is that it coerces Americans. It takes power from patients and states and gives it to Washington, D.C., coercing the individual with mandates and penalties, taking away her right to choose. That is not where the American people wish to be. Now, I like to believe that Republicans and Democrats can find common ground. I've introduced a replacement plan, um, Kim, a replacement plan that would give states the power now, I am willing to concede, um, the, the minority leader believes, that Obamacare is working just fine in his state of New York. In my plan, we repeal Obamacare on a federal level, but if a state like California or New York thinks Obamacare is working for them, God bless them, under my plan, a state legislature would have the right to stay in Obamacare. So here, Congress would pass the legislation giving the state the choice and the state would either have the option we advance, which I think is superior, but when Republicans say that you can keep your health insurance if you wish and we mean it, we mean it. If a state decided they wish to stay in Obamacare, they could, or if a state truly decides they want to have nothing at all to do with any of this, they can totally opt away from the Medicaid expansion, from any help for others in their states to purchase insurance, period. Now, I think this recognizes that if the minority leader wants to claim it's working in New York, they can keep it, but clearly Obamacare is not working in some other states. We can talk about Arizona, where briefly a county did not have a single insurance company providing insurance, and where premiums increased by as much as 100%. We can look at Louisiana, my state, where that quote I gave earlier, a fellow and his wife $39,000 for one year's premium. Clearly, Obamacare markets are failing there. So let's re repeal Obamacare, give the states the power, allowing them to choose the system that will work for them. Now, health care cost is important. Under our bill, we make health care more affordable by giving the patient the choice, the, 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 the power, if you will, of price transparency. Under Obamacare, we've seen prices rise out of control. A lack of price transparency keeps providers from having to compete, which takes away the consumer's power of choice. You can see this power of price transparency. 15 years ago, LASIK surgery cost $1,000 an eye or $875 an eye with more for astigmatism. Uh, now you can drive down the street, you see a billboard, a billboard that says, LASIK surgery, $275 an eye. So over a period of time when everything has increased, 
LASIK surgery has come down, the power of price transparency. Another example I like to use, a woman, a physician, went for her mammogram. She wanted to pay cash. They talked her out of it. Oh, no, 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 we don't even know what to charge you. Okay, I won't pay cash. They built her insurance company. She later found that if she'd paid cash for a mammogram, it would have cost her $90. As it turns out, they billed the insurance company $500. Her deductible was $100. She was actually out $10 because they billed her insurance company. She should have known that price going into it. One more example. Uh, if a doctor orders a CT scan, the cash price according to an LA Times article a few years ago in the Los Angeles Basin, varied from $250 to $2,500. And unless you're an investigative reporter for the LA Times, able to call up and get that cash price, you otherwise would not know. I guess maybe it sometimes helps to have another example. Would anyone buy a car if they did not know the price of the car beforehand? And yet, that is routinely done with healthcare. Under the legislation that I and Senator Collins have introduced on in the Senate and I and Pete Sessions have introduced on the House of Representatives, people will know what the cash price is. And I have found, working in a hospital for the uninsured, that when you give the patient the information and power they need to know to make the better decisions, you get better outcomes. By the way, we've been told that Republicans don't have a plan. The plans I am speaking of now are drafted in legislative language. Legislative language, again, that would repeal Obamacare, put in price transparency, and return decision-making power to the patient. We should repeal the individual mandate, repeal the employer mandate, prevent the federal government, the long arm of the federal government, reaching into someone's household, forcing them to do something that they do not wish to do. Um, but there should be an alternative. Under both the world's greatest health care plan, the bill I introduced with Pete Sessions, or the Patient Freedom Act that I uh, have Susan Collins as a co-sponsor, we take all the money that a state would receive had they done the Medicaid expansion and those eligible signed up for the Obamacare exchanges, and we give that money to the state to allow them to give tax credits to those who are eligible. These tax credits could only be used for health insurance, and if the patient did nothing, she would have a health savings account, catastrophic policy with a pharmacy benefit. She could use the health savings account as first dollar coverage. Now under Obamacare, $6,000 deductible. Under our plan, the patient has first dollar coverage, so if her daughter has an earache and she takes her daughter to the urgent care center, she can cover that visit with the health savings account that would be funded with this credit. They also have a catastrophic major medical coverage. So if they get in that car wreck, taken to the emergency room, high, sky high pricing, they are protected from medical bankruptcy. Now, under our replacement plan, we also give states the option to say that if someone in our state is eligible, they are automatically enrolled. I smile as I say that covers two populations. The person who may live under a park bench and doesn't have his life together to otherwise do it, and the other population would be my 22-year-old son and those like him. Uh, those young folks who never think they're going to get ill, so never sign up for insurance, and without them being in the pool, we end up with a sicker pool. That's what's happened with Obamacare. Um, uh, by the way, it'd be easy to imagine you could end up with 95% enrollment of those eligible should the state decide to go this way. Now. <clears throat> Um, the time frame for our replacement would be simple. Um, in year one, say 2017, Congress passes the enabling legislation, which in year 2018 allows a state to choose between these three options. In 2019, the state would implement the option it chooses. And by the end of 2019, we've made the transition from repeal to replace to implementation. <clears throat> now, folks ask, would I lose my coverage? I'm a physician, and I'm going to take my perspective, a patient who I might see who has breast cancer. And she doesn't like Obamacare. She voted for Donald Trump, but she's on the bubble financially. And she's not sure she can afford coverage, but she's got breast cancer. And as bad as Obamacare is, at least she's getting some care. Now, she's having to put out all this money first, but still she's getting some care. 
If we keep her as the prism through which we look at this problem, so that in the transition from Obamacare to better coverage, she continues to have her therapy, so that at the end of this, not only does she have better coverage, but she has health and recovery from breast cancer, we've done our job. And that is our Republican goal, to keep our prism as that woman who is vulnerable from a sickness she has now. In our transition, she doesn't lose coverage, she merely moves to better coverage. I introduced the Patient Freedom Act with 12 Senate co-sponsors in 2015, and then again teamed up with Representative Pete Sessions in 2016 to introduce the world's greatest health care plan. That's truly its name. Tom Price, our soon-to-be HHS secretary, first introduced his Empowering Patients First Act to the House of Representatives in 2014. Speaker Paul Ryan, Representative Fred Upton, Senators Richard Burr and Orrin Hatch have also outlined plans for comprehensive health care reform. And all these plans create a new system that returns power of choice to patients and to states. Simple provisions, as I've described, like health savings accounts, uh, instituting free market values, if we put that replacement, if we put into a replacement plan now, will quickly have an effect upon millions. Republicans have worked hard to lay the groundwork to repeal and replace Obamacare. President-elect Trump has said he wants repeal and replace to happen at the same time. He promised both. We should fulfill both promises. Our majority leader has said that we can do a better job as Republicans covering more people. We have the principles, the ideas, and the plans ready to go. So let's put them to use. We use it, we, I'm sorry, we owe it to the American people to carry out that replacement now with a smooth transition so that the insured population can grow without anyone losing coverage in process. Republicans are committed to creating and passing effective health care legislation to replace Obamacare and to bring real coverage to all Americans. Now is the time to do so. Madam President, <coughs> I yield back.